A very good morning to all. Uh, I, Professor Shashank, welcome all the participants for the awareness webinar on Fundamental of Total Productive Maintenance, which is organized by Sanatana Research and Training Institute, a unit of Sanatana Sampratishtana Mysore, in association with Rotary Club of Mysore West. Prayer is the process of talking to God in order to achieve our purpose. So let us begin this webinar by seeking the blessing of Lord Almighty. Vakratunda Mahakaya Koti Surya Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Kareshu Sarvara. Now I request Dr. Ramachandra Siji, Managing Director, Sanatana Research and Training Institute, to welcome and introduce the speaker of today's webinar. I also request him to welcome the guests and the participants. A very good morning, uh, one and all. I take this opportunity on behalf of Sanatana Research and Training Institute, which is an unit of Sanatana Sampratishtana, Mysuru, to welcome today's speaker, Dr. P. Sivasankran, Associate Professor, Manakula Vinayagar Institute of Technology, Pondicherry, and officials from Rotary Club of Mysore West and participants from different parts of the country. So let me introduce uh, today's speaker, Dr. P. Sivasankran has obtained a BE degree in Mechanical Engineering from Pallavan College of Engineering, Kanchipuram, and ME in Industrial Engineering from Thyagarajar College of Engineering, Madurai, and he has obtained his uh, PhD in Industrial Engineering from Anna University in the year 2015, and he is having total 12 years of teaching experience in various cadres, and currently is working as Associate Professor at Manakula Vinayagar Institute of Technology, Pondicherry, he has published a total of 39 papers in reputed international and national journals. Also, he has presented many papers in uh, international conferences also. And he has uh, granted with uh, two patents and uh, uh, three design patents and two patents he, are filed, uh, he has uh, filed to uh, grant. And he has published uh, books on quality management, process planning and cost estimation managerial economics and computer integrated manufacturing, uh, automation for excellence, et cetera. He has organized uh, more than 20 workshops and guest lecturers and recent technological advances in the area of industrial engineering. He is a peer reviewer and editorial member for various reputed international journals. He is a life member of Indian Institute of Indi Industrial Engineering, Mumbai, IAANG USCA, and Teaching and uh, Education Research Association, Eurasia Research. And also he is uh, proficient in softwares like uh, um, Design for Assembly, AutoCAD, RoboDK, etc. And even he has guided various uh, academic projects for UG and PG students. And he's regularly applying for projects, uh, seminar grants, FDPs, HTTPS, under various schemes of uh, DST, CSIR, uh, NS and TM and ASCT, et cetera. He has received two academic excellence awards. He has carried out a novelty research and work titled Comparison of Jute and Sisal Fiber Reinforced Composites Using Crust PCB with the Support of C Intel Services Chennai. He has actively participated in various uh, faculty development programs, national and international workshops at various institutions. He has delivered guest lectures at the institution level as well as uh, the other reputed uh, industries and the topics related to software applications and other industrial engineering areas. So uh, this is his brief introduction. Um, the beautiful thing about learning is that nobody can take it away from you. So that's why never stop learning. When we stop learning, then we stop growing. So learning gives creativity Creativity leads to thinking, and thinking provides knowledge, so knowledge makes you great. So the knowledge is divine, knowledge is powerful, and it should be shared. So this is one of the, this platform which is created to share the knowledge. And coming to today's topic, the total productive maintenance, it's a method to achieve maximum equipment eff effectiveness through the employee involvement. So it involves the management operators and including uh, the, maintain, uh, the maintenance people. The main goal of the uh, total productive maintenance program is to markedly increase the production while at the same time increasing employee morale and job satisfaction also. 
so some of the important objectives of this uh, total product queue maintenance if we talk about to reduce the accidents in the industry increase ownership among the employee and um, sharing of experience and knowledge optimized work schedules of every employee efficient workforce uh, to avoid wastage enhanced employee skills production of goods without compromising on its quality and non defective goods to be sent to the customer market producing goods at the earliest possible time with the zero breakdown uh, involving people in all organization levels and rectifying customer complaints and keeping the workforce clean and safe and uh, even if you uh, consider the the nine essential essentials uh, of this total productive maintenance it is a self maintained workplace and elimination of uh, the six big losses uh, the industrial losses and zero breakdowns zero defects optimal life and availability of tools self improvement and short production development time and low life cost machine life cost productivity in indirect uh, departments and zero accidents and if you talk about the main targets of this total productive maintenance to obtain a minimum 90% of uh, overall equipment effectiveness the run the machines every uh, even during uh, lunch that is lunch is for operator not for the machines and operate in a manner so that there are no customer complaints and reduce the manufacturing cost by up to 30% and achieve 100% success in delivering the goods as required by the customer and maintain an accident free environment as a whole the plant increase the suggestions from the workers employees by three times that is develop multi skilled and flexible workers so uh, this uh, the today's uh, webinar fundamentals of uh, the total productive maintenance so five sessions we have planned today only we'll speak about the fundamentals the few more uh, the, the four sessions uh, will he'll going to give uh, some deeper uh, knowledge about this uh, tpm with the case studies and all so with this i wish all the pa participants will have a fruitful interaction with the speaker once again uh, thank you one and all over to you shashank uh, thank you sir no i request dr p shivashankar Associate Professor Manakula Vinayagar Institute of Technology, Pondicherry, to start the session. So very good morning, one and all present here. So let me introduce about myself. I'm Dr. P. Sivashankar, currently working as associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering from Manukula Vinayagar Institute of Technology, Pondicherry. First of all, I thank the program, uh, the director, uh, Dr. Ramachandra C.G. sir, for giving me the opportunity to share my view on the basic fundamentals of total productive maintenance an initial introductory session uh, for today's program so our agenda will be like uh, knowing what are the objectives of the total productive maintenance then the basic uh, introduction of total productive maintenance and what are the pillars that is nothing but different phases of total productive maintenance. So here we are going to discuss about the eight pillars of total productive maintenance, then followed by importance of DPM, um, then procedure. What are the guidelines, procedural guidelines for implementing total productive maintenance in real practical uh, environment, say working organization, then a case study of DPM 
uh, how to monitor the maintenance of the lab equipments in uh, technical institutions. So then finally, as a closing remark, the conclusion about the full view of the total productive maintenance. So in this way, we are going to follow the different uh, the agendas uh, one after the other. So first, let us understand what are the goals of TPM, that is the basic objectives of total productive maintenance. So during the introduction session, so the director has said that the TPM aims for eliminating the defects by reducing the wastage cost, right? So minimizing the cost, that is the first and primary objective before going to implement the concept total productive maintenance in real practice. So every worker uh, as well as the team leader, so they have to understand what are the possible way to reduce the rejection or defects that may add in the equipment uh, in every day-to-day -day production, right? So according to the industry, the point of view, so every equipment should be maintained at the top level, okay, with the zero defects. So by considering that as a goal, so we need to minimize the scrap cost or the rejection cost due to the break time, break time cost by the missionaries. So we want to reduce the breakdown time, repair time, okay, by continuously engaging the equipment for a long work cycle. So next objective, reliability. So by reducing the rejection cost, so we can able to improve the long usage of the equipment, that is reliability, okay? So, Here in reliability engineering, so we can engineer in a particular time period, right? So here also we can do a lot of the research in reliability engineering, particularly in maintenance side. So we can able to take a, a sample of data. So in a particular month, how many number of times the so-called missionaries is said to be failure or downtime, collect the frequency of past historical data and based on which we can able to measure the reliability of the equipment, whether it is good or bad, okay, depending on the number of failure incidents in the past. And also reducing the accidents, the TPM aims for reducing the accidents by increasing more safety, both with respect to the human being and also the missionaries, right? So then the next thing, uh, increasing the responsibility in terms of ownership among every employee. According to the TPM culture, here every factory layman is highly responsible enough to solve the problem that may arise every day inside the shop floor. So not only the team leader, along with the team leader, the subordinates, everybody are equally responsible enough. So that's why TPM empowers the total employee involvement. The other side or other dimension for TPM, we can say it's a total employee involvement. So the TPM is not like a conventional uh, method of practice, whereas in conventional manufacturing system, leader will give the responsibility to some other person, okay? So he will act only the, as a management representative. The subordinates has to do all kind of physical stuff, but in TPM, it is not like that. So leader is also having an equal re responsibility as equivalent to subordinates. So everybody are questionable according to the TPM culture. If anything is not uh, executed according to the correct plan, Right. So now let us understand the conceptual, the basic definition of total productive maintenance system in connection to the objectives of TPM. Right. So TPM means which is fully focused on condition monitoring of equipment maintenance. 
So this concept is applied for reconditioning or increasing the performance efficiency of the equipment maintenance by replacing the faulty uh, the, uh, the sub-assemblies or uh, parts that are found in the machinery, which is not working in a better way, right? So we want to improve the overall equipment effectiveness. So that is a major thing to be focused in TPM, right? So improving the safety, efficiency under various levels. Okay, that is the best practices the TPM uh, encourages all employees within the organization. So thereby we can be able to minimize the unavoidable delays that is unwanted delays and also the repair time when a manufacturing process is going on in real time, right? So that whatever the planned actions or ideas as uh, proposed by the team leader and also the subordinates, so everything can be carried out without any flaw if TPM is successfully implemented in a practical scenario, right? So there won't be any uh, delays are a uh, lot of rejections. If all the members of the team uh, are properly educated, trained by knowing what is uh, the TPM culture, right? And also it improves the employee work ethics, the TPM. So because unity and integrity, it mainly teaches about unity and integrity about every people. So they should know what is their primary job responsibility and what for they are working. So what will be the outcome of TPM for the entire organization and also for every individual, the personal career growth. Okay, right. So that in indirectly improves the employee work culture as a lot. Right. So the next phase of the discussion, we will get into the, the problem introduction after, for, after the concept of definition of TPM. Right. So further in-depth meaning of TPM can be different, can be explained in a different way. Right. So here it is nothing but a total integration of both equipment maintenance and also the physical, the manufacturing process. Right. So if we able to keep all the tools, equipments and machineries are in good serviceable condition. So the manufacturing process, which are yet to be planned uh, to be executed in the corresponding machinery. So that will also be in a much better way without any errors. So the DPM aims for overall improvement of the business strategy by increasing the equipment availability, okay, in the regular production hours, right? So not only that, the DPM is said to be a proactive approach. So what do you mean by the proactive approach? So the conventional maintenance practice, let us say breakdown maintenance. So that is not a proactive approach because only when the failure comes, the people will rush up to the, uh, the working environment and they will analyze and discuss uh, what the root cause for the failure that is encountered by the mission, that has been encountered in the mission. But in proactive maintenance, it is not like that. So every, every day, in every minute, people will be focused towards the performance efficiency of the machineries, production machine tools. So systematic thinking, well developed uh, the procedures. So that makes a DPM as a proactive approach, right? So it embraces people management and also working environment and uh, thorough guidelines, very clear managerial guidelines, that is systematic guidelines or procedures. So that makes a DPM as a proactive approach in real time, right? So the organization which has already implemented the DPM concept, so the entire team members have given, uh, plays an essential role in our, between the operators and also the senior next level management uh, maintenance ex experts, right? So you take a particular industry which has been excellent in DPM for uh, more than five or 10 years. 
so in that particular industry every team member are highly responsible for even a small error both operator level and also the senior the expert level okay in order to sort out the problem so the the continuation of introduction given in the next the following slide so the process of tpm tries to educate self educate through inner motivation okay self motivation of operators to know the basic knowledge about how tpm can be implemented for an effective machine maintenance by reducing the uh, the cycle time by completing the work progress within a short span of time okay by eliminating uh, team bonding activities in order to uh, increase the equipment performance as a paramount importance nowadays so it is not a single man job tpm right so it is considered to be a team bonding activities right employee subordinates as well as the top level people all are equally playing a role in uplifting the performance of the equipment okay in order to complete the different batch of jobs exactly on the stipulated time period so without losing the customers the satisfaction so it is a rigorous uh, system we need to follow a very strict rigorous system in order to educate the tpm culture every day uh, within the employee mindset so even if you fail to follow and one day the next day it will be a bottleneck for everybody so it it has it, it should become a, a regular uh, practice in every day so work environment right so here are some of the key features that are listed uh, about the total productive maintenance so the first one so cross functional teams it involves employee at the various uh, uh, cross functional team the people from different department uh, domain knowledge for example you take uh, people from manufacturing uh, maintenance uh, stores uh, the purchase department they can uh, uh, interface themselves uh, they can support each other okay so to uh, know about the in and out of uh, total productive maintenance these are the, uh, the the different people who involve in the tpm culture right so next thing tpm aims for uh, participation autonomous participation okay right so every operator uh, is responsible for their own job responsibilities right so whereas in conventional maintenance system they have to wait for the superior order but here in tpm an operator can able to sort out the problem on their own without seeking the guidance of the tpm the leader uh, right so it uh, entertains the autonomous maintenance autonomous part participation of an operator as per the daily routine schedule and also uh, forming of small group activities to monitor the procedural uh, the guidelines of tpm if any uh, the points that are missed not understood by the the team members very thoroughly then the procedures have to be regularized every now and then okay with the fine revision and that has to be given uh, as a vital importance through the organization by publishing in a magazine or in a company notice board okay or within the shop floor system by adopting a display board or a name board system such that they have to follow all the rules and regulations as per the guidelines of tpm then may maximize the effective use of the equipment by reducing the number of the breakdown time right so by minimizing the minor repairs maintenance by efficient cleaning and uh, uh, inspection procedures so these are the key features of the total productive maintenance
¿no? Get the workshop, the different the modules of the total productive maintenance. The, the, practical skills and also it uh, try to self empower the employees through inner motivation right and at last we can able to bring the ownership of operator for every equipment right so make sure that every day the maintenance of the equipment is properly lubricated and cleaned up right the next thing identify the upcoming issues so the operator has to predict well here in autonomous maintenance the maintenance crew the team member is highly flexible enough to handle any kind of uh, uh, task at any time interval. There is no standard the time followed. So the employees are more free enough to address the, the, the failure issues or any problem that are faced in the shop floor at the various time uh, intervals. Okay. The next, uh, uh, the second pillar of the TPM, that is phase number two, focused improvement we can say continuous improvement right so this is the next pillar that we are going to see under the tpm so in continuous improvement here we can have more than one multifunctional that is cross functional team so we can connect two different the cross functional team for example if uh, uh, any particular the failure takes place in a in a mission for example say uh, a gearbox is not functioning properly due to inappropriate maintenance due to frequent wear and tear so the people from manufacturing department they can call the maintenance team member so to in order to share the uh, the the issues right so here both the team department people can able to work on concurrent basis, okay, to find out the remedial solution for the problem, right? So thereby we can able to show the consistency in terms of continuous improvement by controlling the uh, regularly occurring problems through the aid of cross-functional team members. The next one, the third pillar we are going to discuss now is about the quality management, right? So here, uh, there are a lot of descriptive tools and also uh, the quantitative tools are available in quality management. So here, we can able to identify the variations in the defects uh, that can be in the process, in the production process, and also variation. We can also study the variation in the missionaries using a fishbone diagram or a parento chart. These are some of the descriptive the, the statistical tool in quality management. If we want to do some numerical analysis like uh, X bar and R chart, so variable chart or using attribute chart, okay, these are the quantitative method of the assessing the, the process quality in understanding the defects. So based on that, we can make a try to reduce the number of defects uh, by targeting the quality issues. Okay, by knowing the root cause for the various problems. So these are the responsibilities or the functional responsibilities that are focused here in quality management problem in both missionaries and also uh, with reference to the, the skill of the worker uh, who is going to use the equipment and other gadgets. Okay. Then the fourth pillar of total productive maintenance so plant maintenance, it can be otherwise called as a 
scheduled maintenance okay so that is nothing but uh, predicting the the probability of the occurrence of failure well in advance right so using some modern here we can uh, recommend some modern technologies like iot uh, deep learning or machine learning technologies that can be applied in shop floor in a production shop floor such that so the sensor can able to predict before the failure arrives so we can able to sense the uh, abnormal behavior of the missionaries uh, right so that we can able to put a stoppage at the initial level okay so through planned maintenance uh, system okay right so the next one the fifth pillar of tpm proper education and training so through proper education and training how we can able to uh, upskill the employees in following the various guidelines of total productive maintenance every day so as uh, the program director said empowerment employee empowerment so here in this phase so the education and training through that so we can able to uh, motivate the people of the organization by conducting regular workshops practical forums okay so the managers are highly responsible enough to uh, upskill the team members knowledge so they have to coach the employee so whatever the doubts the, the, the queries raised by the team members so the middle level the managers are highly responsible enough uh, to train the, the the subordinates and the maintenance staff can learn both preventive and proactive maintenance approaches during the training period and also they can able to uh, manage various uh, the, pro the the challenges that are faced every day in the the shop floor issues okay so which uh, indirectly affects the productivity of the organization so how to manage the critical situation okay so all this kind of the education and also the practical skill intensive training will be provided in this uh, the platform that is a pillar 5 education and training so sixth pillar yearly equipment management system so in this uh, phase so the dpm aims for uh easy maintainability of equipment so by simplifying the design aspects so by simplifying the design aspects of the machinery in terms of uh, uh, the aesthetic uh, good look uh, under the operation the functionality so we can able to find out uh, some of the advantages as listed here so periodical review the employee using the different uh, employee domain knowledge so we can go for regular meetings or periodical review so before installing before installing the dpm on every uh, uh, equipment in order to make the equipment to be more robust enough right so it is easy to reach the planned levels in the performance at a very high faster rate due to the minimum issues at the startup stage right so every person is responsible enough uh, whenever you are going to design a equipment uh, the sub assembly uh, before going for a manufacturing so we want to go for simple simplification of the design procedure so using various uh, the fundamental concepts like a tf design for manufacturing and assembly so with the help of that so we can able to simplify the the product the machine design and also the manufacturability of the entire machine component such that so we can that helps the member to maintain the entire machine in a very better way okay so that we can able to minimize the issues at the initial level itself then last but one pillar number 7 so office dpm how total productive maintenance 
can be implemented in both administrative function and the office level. Okay, right. So this is the next pillar we are going to discuss here. It aims for uh, administrative functions like uh, planning and scheduling, procurement and ordering of materials and other data. So these are the primary functional area, the administrative functions where we can able to go for implementation of total productive maintenance concept. So simple example, I can say that uh, inventory management system. So when you are going for buying a new raw material, what is the release date uh, for purchasing the raw material from the vendor? And uh, which date you are going to receive the raw material from supplier back to the manufacturer? So these data you must have uh, ready-madely in hand. So whenever any higher authority wants for verification back reference, so you have to keep a file management, a file records. So, uh, right? so that will be easy for us to narrow down the different issues. Okay. And also minimizing the waste in the invent, in both in inventory and also in administrative office, um, administrative functions. Let us say, for example, if you want to know the, uh, the, the, the PF, which is uh, maintained by the office people under administrative function, so you can maintain a separate ERP, enterprise resource planning software. So employee details and also other the salary, the payroll system, we can maintain it separately. So whenever any uh, the subordinate or even higher authority, they want to know the PF deduction. So that can be taken as a report, an automatic uh, computer generated report. And that will be given as a reference for the next level authority. Okay, right. So we want to maintain the data uh, on time, readily available on time. If you don't have any back data, it is merely a waste, a waste of time in administrative functions. So the administrative functions will not be much effective, more unique. It will not be more unique, right? So in this way, we can follow the total productive maintenance for, administ for empowering the administrative function and office procedures. Then last one, eighth pillar, occupational health and safety. And environment, which involves environmental conditions also, right? So here, every employee must be taken much care by the company management in order to minimize the risk of employee who are working in more hazardous environment. Let us say, for example, a welding uh, environment or bore well inspection, right? So these are some of the hazardous places, right? So we want to educate the safety procedures, uh, the employee who are following uh, every day, right? So without any safety uh, uh, principles, the employee should not be put into work because that will seriously affect the life of the employee at the end outcome, at the end of the day. So it is the responsibility of the company management to highly educate every the people to follow the strict safety procedure in order to work in a risk-free manner. Okay, right? So these are the eight pillars uh, that are listed in the total productive maintenance system. Now coming to the common the procedure. So these are the five steps that are applicable to any <coughs> the manufacturing sectors, the total productive maintenance. So before going to share your plan to the lower level people, first, first thing, clarity in the vision, the objective. Okay. So the people, the management people, they themselves should have a clear vision, direction, proper direction they must have. Okay. Only then it is easy for them to share their own ideas or plans uh, with the entire support of the organization starting from middle level and the lower level management people. Okay. So if the objective is good, but uh, the direction is not clearly meted out to middle level and uh, the low level people, so there is no uh, use in uh, 
implementing the total productive maintenance. You must have a strong vision and a proper direction as a top management people. Okay, then identify uh, the suitable uh, systems, uh, that is suitable work culture, okay, in order to improve not only the missionaries and process, including the human attitude. Okay, so as I already told you that TPM aims for total employee involvement culture. So man is also an important uh, subset in TPM. So along with the missionaries and production process. So we want to identify a common uh, procedure, okay? So to improve all the entities within the organization. Then getting the equipment to make it work in top optimal conditions uh, by measuring the overall equipment effectiveness. So this I can explain in a case study, the concept of overall equipment effectiveness. Then last one, identify the major losses that, uh, that is occurring repeatedly in every time. So these are the five major steps, uh, the common procedure to be adopted as a TPM organization, right? So the, now we are moving to the, the, the practical, the case study. So this case study has been conducted in a Tamil Nadu engineering college uh, in South region, right? Higher learning technical institution. So what are the, the challenges uh, faced by the laboratory, uh, the, the people who are working in the laboratories as a lab staff, the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and what the changes before implementing TPM and after implementing TPM, and how the overall equipment effectiveness can be compared with the world-class manufacturing standard so because uh, according to the world class manufacturing standard, the concept of overall equipment effectiveness, they have given 85 percentage as a minimum, the, the criteria, the threshold limit for uh, uh, in order to have a very good mission maintenance, right? So that is the marginal, the break even point according to the world class, the standard, the data. So, but uh, here in this case study, we are going to discuss what is the actual observed overall equipment effectiveness, uh, the percentage utilization of the machinery. So this can be calculated by using the formula, the overall equipment effectiveness is equal to the availability of the machine, quality rate, and uh, depending on the, the rejection rate. Okay, right? So based on which we can able to find out the overall equipment effectiveness for the, every mission. So normal thing is, if it is 70 percentage or 75, it's quite marginally good. If it is below, if OE percentage is below 75, then it is quite very low reliable equipment. So care should be taken to improve the reliability, the characteristics of the equipment very seriously. So this is the concept of overall equipment effectiveness. Now we will get into the, the case study. So in this segment, so the uh, attempt has been made to co conduct an investigation uh, on lab equipment maintenance by, by following the TPM strategy. So the maintenance study was carried out in a technical institution that is situated in South Tamil Nadu region. So here the the focused study is conducted in the Department of Mechanical Engineering Laboratories, namely the following labs, like Production Technology Lab, Metrology and Instrumentation Lab, and Material Testing and Metallurgy Lab. So these are the four labs that has been taken as a uh, study for the primary focus. The case study continues in the next, uh, the following slide. So the first thing, the specific work is carried out for the Production Technology Lab using 5S and the scheduled maintenance strategy. So these are the procedures they adapted. So this data is taken for uh, the one month, uh, uh, the time period. Okay, the procedure is as well as the data, the numerical data, which is given in the next following slide. This is for one month scheduled time period. So these are the standard, the procedures that are given. 
So point one, first thing, identify the non-value added items that are found in the place. Okay, so we want to sort out by removing that, we need to sort out as per the proper order by keeping all the materials, tools and equipment and the correct sequence with the proper uh, name label for every tools and equipments for easy accessibility. The next thing, clean the machines daily uh, uh, in morning, afternoon, and also evening, right? Three times in a day, right? Then standardize the work procedure in order to minimize the throughput time. Then at last, improve the sustainability of the mission, that is the reliability of the mission by maximizing the performance efficiency. So this is the procedure that is followed in the uh, production technology lab and the data that has been taken here. So this is before implementing DPM and after implementing DPM. See the downtime, runtime, mission availability, performance efficiency, quality rate, Okay, so then OE percentage. Okay, the total the OE percentage value before implementing DPM and after implementing DPM. So now we want to compare this the 60.48 percentage, the actual absorbed value, with uh, against the world class uh, the standard data. So they climbed that 85 percentage the world-class standard for manufacturing equipment. So it was said to be 85 percentage. Okay, so this is the uh, break-even point, but here it is far below the actual absorbed value. The overall equipment effectiveness is far below 60.48 percentage. So what are the significant difference what are, uh, that has been listed here? Lack of technical support team. So the lab attenders are not properly uh, educated enough to understand the basics of TPM, the process management guidelines, and lack of awareness, right? Then poor implementation procedures. It has not been practiced daily. Okay. So these are the, the problems that are addressed in the case study. Now, before winding up the session, I just want to conclude uh, all the, the points in a nutshell. So first we have started the introduction that is the objectives of TPM and uh, concept of TPM, what is what and uh, what are the various pillars of TPM followed by the procedures and a small uh, case study uh, implementation, implementation of TPM in laboratory equipment setup. So now with this I conclude the entire view of uh, TPM, the fundamentals uh, regarding today's uh, program. So the effectiveness of the TPM implementation that lies within the human workers. So attitude, the attitude of the employee is more important. Okay, right? So if you change the attitude in a right way, so we can able to stay highly competitive by remaining more professional in our duty by, uh, by, by staying robust in the global com market, uh, com competitive market environment. Okay. So TPM should be taken as a philosophy, right? Both in profession and also in the personal life, not only for the manufacturing system, even for our, the personal life that is more important. Okay. So therefore, the TPM is considered to be a best competitive strategy that is followed in the today's uh, manufacturing organization. So we, we, we want to up update all the modern technologies along with the, the fun fundamental, the concepts of TPM. So in the pillars, I told you the quality management and the yearly equipment maintenance management, I, I told you about some of the latest uh, techniques like uh, IoT, Internet of Things, deep learning, uh, machine learning, and so on. So these uh, technologies to be taught uh, to the operator, uh, layman. So they should also get educated and they can able to uh, sort out the problem uh, within the short span of time. So the further delay in the mission breakdown that can be stopped to a greater extent. 
so with this i end my uh, the technical the talk uh, about uh, the fundamentals of tpm so the further session uh, to uh, the extension of tpm will be continued in some other occasion in future so i thank all the the participant for your uh, the patience listening and also i thank the program the coordinator and uh, the program director uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity uh, to share my views uh, to the external society about uh, the total productive maintenance system to various uh, people who are working in uh, educational setup industries okay so thank you one and all present here if you have any queries please uh, share it in the chat box so once again i thank one and all <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the wonderful and informative session. Now, the participants can ask questions or interact with the speaker by unmuting themselves. The provision is given to you. Hello. Sir. Uh, thank you, Professor, for your... Uh... Very informative session on uh, TPM. Thank, thank uh, you, sir. Sir, uh, I have a query. Whether this TPM can work individually or it is uh, you can uh, use it in association with the uh, other maintenance systems. As I as I already told during the time of uh, the lecture, so the TPM aims for even in education institution also. If, if if we are working in a mechanical so right so cross functional department so it will also help to maintain the educational standards okay uh, starting from the classroom teaching preparing the documents for uh, the nba nac so there also we can able to implement effectively the tpm culture in education system so it is a totally a team environment it is not alone only for the individual within the department between different department also it can be worked out but we have to bring all the mindset different mindset of the people into a uniform synchronized manner that is the big challenge so with respect to the human kind so there is Suppose, a in an industry, we have we may have say preventive maintenance or we may have a predictive maintenance, different maintenance systems. Can we use this TPM in uh, conjunction with that or uh, separately? Actually, earlier it was called as a predictive preventive maintenance. As a modern terminology, this name has been changed now today as TPM, total productive maintenance. Right. So likewise, same like a quality management, it was quality control on those days. Later, quality control was taken as total quality control. Name has been changed. Now, we are used to call as TKM, total quality management. Likewise, day, day by day, so these are terminologies have been coined. But the principles, fundamentals are same. The origin is came from predictive maintenance, TPM, preventive maintenance one. So we have a TQM, sir, TQM, Lean, we have Six Sigma. Um, all these, uh, whether these are interlinked with the TPM or? Yes, exactly. If you follow TPM efficiently, Lean aims for wastage minimization. So if you monitor the machine maintenance every day uh, properly, we can able to reduce the wastage due to the unwanted uh, waiting time, that is a breakdown time of the mission. So we can able to improve the uh, productivity by instead of having a lot of shutdowns, production shutdowns due to long repair time. So lean is indirectly connected with the TPM. You told about uh, OE, you know, sir. OE is a function OE of overall what? equipment effectiveness. It is a function of availability, performance, as well as quality. Quality rate. Yeah, in Indian context, uh, I think quality doesn't even 99% quality, almost all times we may able to get. 
but uh, other two in indian uh, industrial contexts which are contributing to the uh, which is contributing to the lower oe values in your in your uh, vision opinion sir so the, the main thing to have a lawyer in, uh, why people are not following the overall equipment effectiveness culture the concept in tpm so the the primary the problem is uh, the time management between every shift okay then next thing uh, the lack of poor knowledge about uh, the uh, uh, several the guidelines that has been proposed by the industries from the top level the mistake is from the top level the people have to clearly tell them how oe should be practically implemented in order to aim for so on so percentage more than 75 percentage so per day at least minimum four or five times we want to do the cleaning lubrication process so only then we can able to take much care enough to improve the uh, high oe percentage i can take a simple example educational institution jpr group in tamil nadu in chennai okay so panimalar engineering college so they are the best example even for maintaining the lab equipment even restrooms and classrooms so per day they used to maintain uh, the cleaning process so nearly four, four times the morning two times and the evening uh, two times right so that is why so they are excelling in the the facilities and also in other aspects so this is one of the simple example just i can share myself because i went as an external examiner in the year 2014 for a practical lab so i really admire to see such an institution it is maintained very neat and very clean in all the places administrative blocks even in the classrooms are well organized right so they follow a very effective procedure okay sir thank you thank you if anybody is having any questions or clarifications you can uh... Unmute yourself and you can speak to the speak with the speaker. Ah, uh, Shashank, we can proceed. Ah, uh, thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Ramachandra C. G. a managing director sanatana research and training institute to summarize today's webinar hello first of all first of all let me thank today's speaker dr p sivasankaran um, for his excellent presentation on uh, fundamentals of total product maintenance so in his presentation and is uh, the he has given uh, the brief introduction about the total product maintenance and uh, as well as uh, the the important objectives of this to, uh, total productive maintenance and uh, all the different phases like uh, the eight pillars of total productive maintenance he has in detail he has uh, discussed with us like autonomous maintenance the pillar one pillar two like uh, uh, the focused improvement and pillar three a uh, quality management and pillar four planned maintenance or uh, scheduled maintenance and pillar five education and training to employees and sixth pillar is early equipment management seventh one is administrative and office tpm as well as the eighth pillar safety health and environmental conditions so in detail with various examples he has discussed uh, what is the main role of these uh, pillars of the tpm and in the, at the end of the uh, end of his session he has taken one case study in the laboratory uh, case study has taken and before and uh, after implementation of tpm what are the changes so it has uh, uh, the changes uh, has, he has uh, 
obtained that also he has mentioned so, and he has concluded also at the end of the uh, end of his case study so the total productive maintenance as the name itself implies uh, okay the involvement of each and every stakeholder of the entire organization so not, not only the uh, employees or the shop floor person who is uh, involved in the uh, uh, with the uh, machine even middle level management as well as the higher level management also so they, uh, they should also be involved in the entire uh, the maintenance of the entire uh, the, the plant and um, depending upon the the exit system so they can uh, adopt any one of this uh, the pillar and uh, they can uh, improve the overall uh, equipment efficiency of the overall uh, the plant and uh, this is what he has um, explained today is so the four more sessions so we will have various case studies uh, of industrial perspective so once again i thank everyone uh, all the participants for your uh, participation for today's session so once again i thank everyone so over to shashank thank you sir gratitude is the essence of humanity i thank dr p shivashankaran associate professor manakula vinayagar institute of technology pondicherry for accepting our request to be the resource person of today's webinar and also for delivering a very informative session thank you sir i thank dr ramachandra c g managing trustee sanatana research and training institute a unit of sanatana samprasthana mysore and officials from rotary club of mysore west for their involvement in organizing this webinar i also thank shri lokesh c g president dr raghavendra prasad md dr shantaraj aras and shrimati bhagya gopal board of trustees sanatana samprasthana for their support extended in organizing this webinar finally i thank all the participants for your support and active participation in this webinar thank you one and all